Hello, my name is Derek from Tomcat Gas Training and welcome to this series of videos on ACS revision. Now, I've been told in a lot of the comments in my videos I waffle and I go on too much and my videos are too long. So these videos are all hopefully going to be less than 10 minutes long. So the first one we're going to be looking at is tightness testing. So let's get on with it. Now, before we get cracking, First thing is what test equipment are we going to need? Well, we're going to need some kind of equipment for testing the actual pressures. So we've got a normal U-gauge here. You can use your analyzers if they've got pressure testing. Or you can use these cheap digital manometers. But these only go to one decimal point. But these go to two decimal points. So, you can use some manometer fluid to go into your manometer so you can see it. And I've put that in, it goes blue, so you can see the actual pressures. You're going to need leak detection fluid. You're going to need a flat bladed screwdriver or a nut spinner for the test nipple. And you're also going to need a non-contact voltage indicator. Because remember, before we touch any equipment, we need to use our non-contact voltage indicator to see if there's a presence of electric, so we don't get killed doing this test. So that's the equipment we're gonna need. First thing we're gonna do is a let-by test. So, let-by test, what is it? Well, basically, it's a test to see whether this, the emergency control valve, is letting by. So let's look at the procedure. Now, before we get started, we need to make sure we prove our non-contact voltage indicator is working before we use it. We then need to use it. And then we need to prove it again. So first of all, we need to open appliance isolation files and extinguish any pilot lights if the appliance has got a pilot light. We then need to raise any glass uh, folding down cooker lids because we need to test the shutoff valve for the lid. We need to connect a pressure gauge to the meter test point. We now need to level and zero this pressure gauge and what we mean by that is we need to set our water level so it reads zero on both sides of the legs of the U-gauge. We now need to carry out the let-by test of the ECV, the emergency control valve, the AECV, or the alternative emergency control valve, or the MIV, or the meter inlet valve. We need to raise the pressure between 7 and 10 millibars, and then close the test valve. We need to test for one minute. So if we get less than 0.25 rise on a U gauge or 0.2 on an electronic gauge to one decimal point or 0.25 for two decimal points, then we can say it's passed. So if it fails, we need to check the ball of the ECV valve under test. And we do this by spraying LDF or leak detection fluid on the ball. If the let by is confirmed, we need to contact the ESP or the emergency service provider. So that is the let by test of this little thing. Let's look at temperature stabilization. Now, this temperature stabilization is exactly what it says on the tin. It's a one minute test to allow for differences in temperature of maybe the gas coming in and the temperature either outside or in the building. So, we need to rise the pressure to between 20 and 21 millibars for one minute. If it rises or falls, all we need to do is adjust back to between 20 and 21. So it doesn't matter if it rises or it doesn't matter if it, if it falls, it's just a one minute test but it does give you an indication of whether there's a leak or not if it starts to drop. So, temperature stabilisation. And finally, 
the tightness test itself. So at least between 20 and 21 millibars, we test for a further two minutes. So if we've got no perceptible movement on the test, we can say it's passed. So what we mean is we haven't got this 0 0.2 or 0 0.25 rise or fall while we're doing the test. We can deem it's passed. So let's have a quick look and see what we're allowed before we actually say it has failed. Now, in some certain circumstances, we're allowed a pressure drop when we carry out a tightness test. And I want to make a few things clear here. Now, if we're testing a brand new installation with a gas meter and pipework and appliances, it's a zero drop. There's no tolerance whatsoever. You cannot have a drop. But if we're testing an old installation with a gas meter connected, pipework and appliances with no smell of gas, we're allowed a drop. So the table behind me will show this. So remember, this is for a gas meter, pipework and appliances with no smell of gas. So if we've got a meter, a U6 G4, with pipework equal to and less than 28 millimetres, we're allowed a 4 millibar drop. Remember, with appliances connected and no smell of gas. If we've got a U6 G4 with pipework greater than 28 millimetres, but less than and equal to 35 millimetres, we're allowed a 2.5 millibar drop. Again, appliances connected, no smell of gas. If we've got an E6 meter with pipe work equal to and less than 28 millimeters, we're allowed an 8 millibar drop. Again, appliances connected, no smell of gas. E6 with pipe work greater than 28 but equal to or less than 35 millimeters, we're allowed a 4 millibar drop. If we've got a G10 U16 with pipe work equal to and less than 28 millimeters, we're allowed a one millibar drop. And if we've got a G10 U16 with pipe work greater than 28 millimeters, but less than 35 millimeters, again, we're allowed a one millibar drop with appliances connected and no smell of gas. But if you're just testing the gas carcass, so that's gas meter and gas pipe, it's zero drop, whether it's new or old. So if you've got a gas meter and pipe work, it's zero drop. So if you go to a, a property, you do a tightness test, you've got a three millibar drop on your installation with no smell of gas and the customer hasn't reported a smell of gas, what you should do next is isolate the appliances and test to see whether it's on the meter or the carcass, the gas carcass. Because um, if it is, you're allowed a zero drop. So this is where trainee engineers get confused and start putting comments down saying we're not allowed any drop. We are allowed a drop as long as it's an uh, old installation with appliances connected and a gas meter and no smell of gas. Now then, if you go to test a flat and it has a commercial gas meter feeding all the flats, you can't do that test, but there should be an AECV or an alternative emergency control valve within the flat with a test nipple where you can carry out a tightness test. And we do get a permissible drop in that. So remember, we've got no gas meter. We have, but we can't test from that. We've got pipe work and appliances with no smell of gas. If the pipe work is equal to and less than 28 millimetres, we're allowed an 8 millibar drop. If the pipe work is between 28 and 35, with no smell of gas and appliances connected, we're allowed a 4 millibar drop. But remember, no appliances connected, then it's zero drop. Okay, so hopefully that makes it clear on when and where we're allowed permissible drops on a tightness test. Did I make it? Did I manage to explain the tightness test procedure within 10 minutes? Well, technically, if you take away the intro and this, then I've made within the 10 minutes. 
a bit hard for us wafflers. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, why don't you give it a thumbs up or leave a constructive comment down below. If you want me to do another video in less than 10 minutes on any other subjects, put that subject down below as well. If you've not subscribed to our channel, then please subscribe because it helps. And don't forget to hit that notification bell because I release videos mainly on Mondays and Wednesdays. All I've got left to say is, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and tune in for the next 10 minutes when I'm doing purging. Cheers guys.